time happens in different ways for different people. Time I'm in a different passages. place. I love Al Stewart. Time passages. I know, because you assigned him to me as a as a drum, my drum teacher. Oh, man, he's so Thank good. Thank you fucking much. You're welcome. God, I hate... The first time oh, I heard that, I'm like, oh, this is this is easy, okay. It's and fun, then, though. It's like playing a Jackson Brown. It's, a, it's, it's like, more like playing a Jackson Pollock. Oh, Christ. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're like... Wait, what? <laughs> Where did that color come from, Al? What the hell? Jeez. So, for those of you joining us, um, welcome to Two Brains, One Bottle, po the audio podcast strictly for our patron fans, uh, our patrons. I'm Josh, this is Sean, and we are so happy you're here, and we are looking forward to getting into uh, quite a number of things today, including some listener questions, but... What's the whiskey we're doing today, sir? We are, we are <coughs> as Pardon. looking forward to uncovering the notes and the subtleties of you, the listener, that we are into uncovering the notes and appreciations of players that we are into this Doug and Taylor. Because I will tell you what, we were not the kindest mm. in our review of it on YouTube. But what I will say is, after further pontificating and further indoctrination into what Duncan Taylor does, I get it. Yeah. This, I understand. Uh, this is their 12 year, correct? This is the 12 year, so it means the minimum age of the whiskey is going to be 12 years. Then they, after that, there's 14s, 15s, right. you know, um, 18s, 20s. They all fit the flavor profile eventually. And that's structurally what you want to do with an age statement whiskey. Yep, just build it, a flavor it, profile. Even though neither one of us had ever heard of them, they've been around since 1836 or something like that? I thought he said 1936. Yeah, I, sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said Yeah, that. sorry, I'm adding a century on there. Yeah, 1936. Yeah, we're just skipping <laughs> hundreds of years here. The point is, take they, everything we say with a grain of they've salt. They've been around a fair a bit. A grain of salt the size of the geese of Paris. And they... Yeah, nice. <laughs> They've been around a fair bit, and they, they do gins, they do rums, they do all sorts of stuff. And it was like, how have we never heard of them before? Because the price point on it is not bad. But I also get things like Duncan Taylor and E.H. Taylor, like that kind of shit confused. I'm not great with brand names. Uh, see, I always remember Duncan because of Duncan McLeod of the Kalen McLeod. Yeah, I would have gone to like Duncan Pickups. But see, I, I watched every episode or not, the, of the like, Highlander like, series. Right. No, I saw the one movie, but I saw the one movie a lot. <clears throat> I grew my hair out and wore my hair tie with a fucking Sean like Connery, did. a Scotsman no, playing. It's all about Spanier. Adrian Paul. Yes, Sean, Sean Connery, the quote unquote Spanish <laughs> Spaniard. <laughs> Spaniard was hilarious. God, it was bad. Uh, honestly, that movie, my wife and I have the same exact quote. That that our one quote is, "I got something to say." It's better to burn out than to fade away. The curtain in the church. Yeah, I remember. With the lead pipe. We're doing Clue now. <laughs> yes. We should uh, do Highlander Clue. Right? Uh, oh, man. We apologize. Great. You will hear uh, Sean's moving out soon, if you don't know that already. His refrigerator is angry that he's moving out. So occasionally the fan likes to just yell. Do you want to give it a go? Earphone users, you might want to pull them out for a second here and count it off, Shawnald! Eins, zwei, drei! And as most things, as with most things, proper application of speed times mass, which is force, solves the problem at least temporarily. Velocity. Everything's about velocity. It's all about the speed in which you get from point A to point B. Fair enough. And if you make that time as short as possible, the impact tends to shock the system. With force. Repulsion, inertia is a property of matter. Shout so, out to you, Bill Nye, the science guy fans. Bill Nye. Thank you to my 90s people. Yes, Bill Nye, who shocked and amazed everyone when he lit the earth on fire. Did you see that? Mm, what? Bill Nye eventually just came up with a video where he's just like talking about global warming and how it's a real problem, and he lit a globe on fire and said, The Earth's on fucking fire! Literally. And everybody's just like, I don't understand that, Bill 
I? <laughs> he was just like, you know, I can't make it any clearer. And he walks away with the earth, with the globe still burning. Yeah, guess what? Mic drop. Guess what? Listen to scientists. Yeah, right. You know what? I can't stand people who don't believe in science. But we talked about that. There's two kinds of people that... Somewhere... There's two kinds of people that I hate. Those who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the Dutch. Uh, shout out to Austin Powers. I right. Sir that. Michael Caine. Sir hey. Michael Caine. Hey, Sean. You know why nurses... Sir Michael Caine. Yes. I'm working on it. It's, it's, it's on the list. There's a long list of voices, folks. I know. I love voice actors. If you haven't seen it yet, go see uh, I Know That Voice. It's a wonderful, wonderful film about voice actors. Jim Cummings is big in it. Uh, the guy who does all the stuff for Archer. The guy who does all the stuff for Rick and Morty. Like, all these great cartoons. These are voice actors. These are people who, who that's their job. Like, yep. please, please go listen to and support them. Find out their stories. They're wonderful people. I've always thought about trying to get into that because it seems I, like a sweet gig. That's it's it's one of my dreams. It's it's on the list with like you'd be great as a voice actor. I would love to do voice acting. I'd also love to do narration. The I'd thing is, to, it's I, I, yeah. I but I've always had a passion for it. Right. That's why I'll never work in the industry. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I've wanted to do it my entire life, and they'll give it to somebody else. Well, hey, here's to. It's probably our last podcast with you in this location. Hold please. Uh oh, Hold please. There's, okay. not, there's not silence on the floor. Will the senator, the minority leader, please yield? Look at that. Mitch McConnell finally shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's a, I don't it's care. I don't care. Well, you know what you should care about? Why do nurses use red crayons? I don't know. Nurses never make mistakes. They use red crayons because they draw blood. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Oh. All right, all right. I'll, I'll, Damn. I'll, I'll, I don't know if I would have gone after nurses like that. Hey! I told you once! You know what you should do? You, you should tell the landlord you're not going to pay your rent if they don't fix it. <laughs> I wrote a very professional email to them to make sure that I could get out leaving April 2nd instead of April 1st. So I don't push my luck in those departments. Good on you. Hey, I can yeah. I can sit down and crank out a professional email. It is a useful tool to have in your kit. Buddy, I can when you need long it. form. I have no Oh, problem. trust me. Dude, my my last like three months of, of getting my bachelor's degree was all online. No, sorry, six months. I got really good. And writing papers, it sounded like I had studied the material and knew what I was talking about. All of my papers I had to write were by hand, and they all had to have research, and all the like, mm. all of your sourcing had to be written by hand. I didn't double spaced APA like, format. No man, single spaced, handwritten. Eesh. You know what? I always like fucking when, you. You work for that shit. I always like when they like would my say penman, some... penmanship's garbage, but my right. attention to detail can be visceral. Sorry to keep cutting you okay. off. Visceral. Well, I always liked when they said it has to be a certain amount of pages as opposed to a certain amount of words, because I can find the big words, <laughs> and I can add all extra, all these extra sort of words and prepositions to, to take it. up space to take up pages. Yes, but not necessarily to take up work. Yeah. But what's I, I I discovered something. Somebody said, "Hey, if you have a certain amount of words that you have to hit." And you're really close, but you're still like a couple hundred short. Change the font color to white and just type a bunch of gobbledygook until you reach the word count you need. What teacher is going to sit there and actually count all the actual words they read? So there you go, students. That's how you cheat the system. What? By that notion, mm -hmm. if you really want to be a dick about it, <laughs> you don't got to be. You a change. Dick you change the font to white, and you still do the double space. But every space that's in between, it is technically single spaced with white font. So that's how you also. Oh yeah, no. If you, you really also camouflage the count, the word count. 
Well, I think the problem with that is it's easy to accidentally overdo it. And then you're like, this is not 800 words. I can clearly see this is three pages. What the fuck? <laughs> um, you mean I can't type a thousand words in a single yeah, page? In a page. <laughs> <laughs> Half a page, three quarters. Also, I, it felt like a thousand words when I was writing three quarters well, of a page, double spaced with my tracing so paper. So I saw this little supposed like school hack, and it occurred to me, you know, if a teacher ever wants to, all they got to do is left click and drag it across the screen to highlight everything, and they're going to see the fake words or the hidden words. But hey, I got a whiskey joke for you. You ready? <laughs> I'm never ready. Don't cry. It's, it's okay. I'm never ready for your jokes. Go to your ski. They're always so much worse than I think they're going to be. Well, two guys are robbing a distillery. Okay? Don't. Don't. Next. (laughs) Next joke. Jeez, I almost fell off the stool. Two guys are walking, robbing a distillery. And one of them picks up a bottle. He's like, he says to the other one, is this whiskey? And the other guy says, no more whiskey than wobbly. Thank you very much. I'll see myself out. I wish I wish you all, you people could see the pain on his face from that joke. <clears throat> you know, you know, my my dad was a Vietnam War veteran. Mine was Korea. The man had post traumatic stress disorder. Mm-hmm. He liked to throw things. Yeah. I understand now why he threw things. Because that joke <laughs> made me want to pick you up and throw you through the goddamn wall. Just yeet me. <laughs> Just fucking yeet you out the window. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> God damn. I wasn't going to use it, but when it came up on two different lists. Oh, fuck. <laughs> two of you stupid cunts were both unoriginal enough to repost the same joke. Uh, God damn it. What the fuck happened to humor? Uh, it died with um, Richard Pryor, I think, and George Carlin. And oh, that. man, Carlin. I was just watching a thing about Carlin today. The thing I liked about from, him is... From 11 years ago when he was on yeah. The View for a second. The thing I liked about him is he wasn't like a shock comedian. He wasn't cursing to be... He was purposely pushing against the censors and against the system and, and trying to wake, like get people to think for themselves. Yes. And I feel like there's a cognitive dissonance that happened after him that, that the generation right. after me didn't get. Honestly... When you think about like a celebrity or a, a, a famous comedian that goes into a movie role, Rupert from Bill and Ted's Excellent Journey, Excellent Adventure, I mean, Rupert, right? Rupert, yeah. Was George Carl? He was just himself. <clears throat> so Sean, Rufus, Rufus, I'm sorry, fucker, I'm sorry. I was like, who the hell's Rupert? And then I went to the Grim Reaper, and I was like, no, that was Reaper. Rufus Xavier Sarsaparilla. Rufus. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Sorry, George Carlin also had one of the best fucking monologues in one of the shittiest movies I've ever seen. Oh, what? It was a sequel to Scary Movie, and they were doing a spinoff of The Matrix. And they go into the room. Wait a minute. When was this? This was 2000s. This was he was a rabbit. Yes. I thought he died before that. No. I thought he died in the 90s. Would you shut your whore mouth? <laughs> you shut your whole mouth. Ooh, I got that reminds me of uh, something I gotta ask you. George Carlin. Give me a second, folks. I actually have a Google machine this time. Yes. It's just taking me a while because it's my stupid iPad. He has a device um, that holds the entire knowledge of oh all humankind. Christ. And he uses it to look at cat videos. George Carlin death. Why would you do that? No, George Carlin death? Isn't that what you were looking at? When he died? I thought you were looking up when he died. He died in 2008. Wow. I was yeah, way off. I, yeah, he died the year I graduated. He died right around my graduation. Oh, oh fuck. That's a big one for me. I was off by like a decade. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Um, 
Carlin went at no eight, and uh, I did my I did one of my senior English papers on stand up comedy, which is why I have so many books about stand up. I did my I did my senior research paper on stand up comedy and how laughter back when you had to buy books and how laughter affects us mm. psychologically and how it is a release of endorphins and how it's a release of all the phytochemicals that make us sexual but also make us vulnerable. Like it's all of these wonderful mix of emotions. Mm-hmm. And then I drew and then I drew that parallel into our socioeconomic interplay that we have in the country. Like it was good. Don't fuck with me on stand up. I know my shit. Apparently. Carlin Carlin was a <clears throat> god. And the man said himself he was like I knew I wanted to be an actor, so I said, "If I become a stand-up, then they got and I get that good, they gotta let me in the movies." <laughs> that was his fucking. That was his interview. That was his words. Who? But who gave the who? Who planted that thought in his head? Because there were him, comedians. Him. His whole thing is, "Ain't I cute? Ain't I clever? Yeah. And I like the attention. Ain't I cute? Ain't I clever? Isn't he cute? Isn't mm-hmm. he clever?" He liked that, so he just worked towards. Well, if I do this to do this, I can get there. You know what the he interest- just fed that. He fed that. He nourished that thought. Like I want mm-hmm. attention, so I'll do something that gets me attention. Or I like to perform in front of people. <clears throat> I like to make funny voices. He's like, I want to be an impressionist, a stand-up comic, an actor. Everything that's centered around performing. You know that actually plants a, a seed of thought in my head <clears throat> for the next time I interview a musician or a band. Yeah. What kind of stand-up do you listen to? No. Oh. What are you trying to tell people on stage? What's the message you're trying to deliver? Yeah, basically, because when you get on stage, and especially if you're doing original music, you're trying to tell them a story generally, and whether it's through costumes or, or makeup or, or stage you know, uh, effects or whatever, or just your words. You're telling a story, and I've you're trying to you. get them to figure out. You're trying to get them to like. I've got one for you. Bring it. <clears throat> so learn me, Obi Wan. I'm going to say something about this podcast that is. I tr- I try to embrace a belief system of feel the incredible stretch. Go to the place oh. you've never gone before. I like that. That's feel good. feel the. Find the new experience every day. It doesn't have to be a giant experience. It just has to be a new one. So I'm going to say in this one. My girl's favorite thing right now that's happening is Beyonce's Homecoming on Netflix. I cannot tell you how happy I am to know and I nothing sat, about that. I sat down and watched it mm-hmm. with her because... That's what she wanted, and I, that's the kind of guy I am. I will sit down and watch it with you. Oh, yeah. Have a personal maybe investment. once, maybe gets. Mm, no, just, just, she tried to come at me with that same perspective of, as a musician, like, it's Jay-Z, it's Beyonce, it's people that are putting on stadium tours, it is production value, it is lighting, it is an entire staff of people. There is, mm-hmm. she's trying to come at me from the business perspective of it. She sold you on it. Didn't need to. Okay. Didn't need to. I heard about it, and I hadn't been able to sit down and watch it, but it was always something I was kind of interested in. I love the idea of the pop star, but I hate the fact that when the pop star becomes the pop star, they stop spreading the message of when they didn't have all that shit. Once they, once they get it all, the message changes. Ain't I great? Ain't I great? Ain't I great to have all the shit? Like, right. instead of, I worked hard to get here, and I'm going to work hard when I get there, and I'm going to work hard the day after. When I have everything I want, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to be meaner, I'm going to put more into it, because that's what I want. Like, investing in yourself, I think, should be the message. Definitely. And I think a lot of famous musicians, or actors for that matter, should go back and listen or watch their early work and remember who was I then? Why did it, why why did I get here? Not 
what does the record company want me to have, do or what is you know how much money did I have in my pocket when I took this gig? Yeah. What was what is my <laughs> yeah, not what there, my especially in the in the uh sorry, go ahead. It's okay. Because who like who I who I am as a songwriter is way different than when I first wrote my first stuff, but not nearly as different as say Taylor Swift at early years yeah. and Taylor Swift now. Taylor Swift now is, is becoming a product, whereas Taylor Swift at the beginning, she wrote all her own stuff. Right. And you were like, wow, she's really talented. Not for a girl, not for a blonde, but she's really talented as a singer-songwriter. What? Oh, he's popping ice, ladies and gentlemen. I have, I have A-Rock. A-Rock? <laughs> In a Glenn care, it's a sin. Oh, you're going to be excommunicated, son. And now he's trying to get it from the ice tray into a Glen Cairn. It's so, he's so cute when he struggles. Bring the clink. Nice. Way to Got go. Got it. Way to go, Colonel Clink. Got it. Schultz! But I remember someone introduced me to Taylor Swift and was so impressed. Like, yeah, she writes all her own stuff. I'm like, wow, this is actually really good stuff. Yeah. And now it's just like... You're just a dime a dozen pop star. So I totally agree with you. But I think if they if, if they listen to themselves, their early, early stuff, not from a, a perspective of, oh, I'm going to pull out the old hits for the fans at, at, at this concert and, you know, blow their minds or whatever, make them happy, but listen to it and say, who was I when I got signed or when I got famous? How can I get back to that person? Because that person was who I am or who I was. Or, <coughs> excuse me, or how do I reach out to that person and try and extend the message they wanted to convey? Because maybe I'm out of touch with that person. Right. And beyond that, who's the person I'm looking forward toward? Right. Who am I looking to pass the baton off to? Who am I thinking about in the future context of things? The sad reality is that the ones who have done the best job of holding on to who they are as they got famous are the ones that we don't hear about because they don't make news. You know, they don't make tabloid news. Like, um, or if they do make tabloid news, it's boring stuff. You know who's been great? David Arquette. Yeah, when's the last time you heard about something, something about him? But he's a solid comedian. Well... No, no, uh, no. David Arquette, uh, for those Oh, who I'm know, sorry, actor David Arquette. I was thinking of a different David. Never yes, mind. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Uh, David Arquette, Scream fame. Yep. Also, pro wrestler. And I, I forgot and, about that. Oh, no, my God. No, 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 no. Oh, my no, God. No. I forgot about that. So there was the 90s controversy that was his run in WCW. However, people did not take him seriously. He was taking the gig seriously. No, I, I've read the biography. I, I know he took it seriously. The man, the man took all the bumps. He took mm -hmm. all the beatings. He took all the shitty matches. Yeah, please give him more <laughs> credit than he has fucking got. Because Christ, some of you people are really brutal. Oh, is he getting hate? Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, you can't you can't you can't kill David Arquette. It's fantastic. Yeah, don't cancel him. Please watch it. But also yeah. with the wrestling stuff with David Arquette, he's I'm predicting a resurgence with him and Total Nonstep Action Wrestling, TNA Wrestling, which is going to work with all elite wrestling, which is a direct competitor to world wrestling entertainment, WWE. Is that what TNA stands for? Yeah. Total nonstop? Total non -stop You know where action. my brain went. Total non -stop action. You know where my I brain know. went. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be that, and then they changed it. Were they trying to, like, basically be Glow without Glow? No, Glow was always about the character. Glow was, like... Fair glow enough, was, but Glow, glow was, was the a... first time I saw women wrestling in underwear. Oh, you poor child. You missed so many years. Oh, no, no, I saw all the other ones, but I'm saying they were building up to the point where they are like, okay... We're, we need to do something. Gorgeous ladies of wrestling, I don't fault you at all. 
You helped a young pubescent boy feel thing ways about things. G L O W Glow, even the series on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful series. Great job by Awesome Kong. Awesome Kong. Uh, what's, what's Awesome Kong? I'm not familiar with that. Who is Awesome Kong? Who is Ooh. Awesome Kong? Who is Awesome Kong? Sorry. Awesome Kong is uh, the one woman I would want to be smothered to death by Awesome Kong. Oh, was she basically Andre the Giant with boobs? Larger African American. Yeah, yeah. I, I do re vaguely remember. She, she had to remember. She, For me, this was this like was, two days, was, decades longer than you. I'm talking about Glow, the Netflix series. Oh no, I'm talking Glow when it was on TV. Oh, buddy. Okay, I'm all right. So first of all, Awesome Kong. I am old. And You're female. talking about King Kong Bundy. Well, no, no. I'm, there was a woman who was like, but I can't remember in my mind. Okay, so awesome. I remember a, a size, not a color or a, or a, you know. Awesome Kong worked in WWE, worked in TNA. She is a, a consultant on Glow, and she's one of the wrestling consultants. Okay. And I wish, I don't know if she has a school open, but I would fucking love to go to that school and take wrestling classes from her. Because she seems very patient and very understanding. She got booked in a lot of weird, awful fucking angles from WWE. They didn't appreciate the kind of athlete she was. When you say angles, you mean like... The character, the storylines. Okay, okay, not camera angles, but no storylines, angles. Gotcha. That's that's what we talk about with with the dramatic part of wrestling. You've got storylines, you've got angles, and then you've got the in ring work. Gr fucking amazing in ring worker, but just got booked in yeah. stupid shit. Like you're better than that. Just like right. just like <laughs> um, same thing with the uh, Natalia Nightheart. Same thing with um, I don't remember any of their names unfortunately when from when I watched Glow, but I do remember thinking even then they have to work twice as hard as the men. They're putting in the work in the ring, right? And of all the when they're trying to make women's wrestling popular, mm -hmm. who are the people they have to look up to? Men. So who are the trainers for the women? Men, big bulky dudes. Yep, and fl or flashy like fl flashy wrestlers. Right. right, not small limber lucha libres, right. which is what you I mean, should have. Oh, from a man, from a visceral danger. Oh, that type of aggressive like, perspective. Like, I enjoy like lucha style wrestling, but I can also get into the technical stuff. Yeah. But with women wrestling, I can see why it wasn't pushed a lot. Because women wrestling was a whole bunch of leg locks or arm, you know, forearms, clotheslines. We call those breast holds. Right, but it was it was like, what's what what would, what looks realistic for a woman to pull off? You didn't see any women doing like triple gainers off the freaking turnbuckle, you know, landing on a dude's chest or a woman's, you know, chest. <laughs> I, in fact, I don't remember ever seeing a woman take the, a, a leap off a turnbuckle in glow. Again, are you talking about? Ago. Are you talking about just literally a body press where it's just jump? Just and... any attack off of the turnbuckle. Anytime they climb up on the turnbuckle. Well, yeah, but that was also a time of the period. Like it was just a, a happenstance of the period. But in the well, with the men though, at the same time frame, you were getting the fly burrito. You know, you know, fly burrito. I don't remember his, his wrestling name, but he, his nickname was the Fly Burrito. It was like a move. It was a. Yeah, uh, I'm just. I'm just I'm, it it I'm was. Gonna, I'm, look, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, it, it was I, kind I of a combination I'm, of. I know what I'm doing. It was kind of a combination of Stone Cold's uh, stunner move, but with like a forearm kind of to the throat area, if I remember right. By the way, listeners. Spanish Fly? No, the Flying Burrito. Listeners. You know, I'm just trying to make sure that you're doubling down and tripling down on that name. It's recorded now for posterity. It's the dead center. This is the heart of the podcast. This is going to be the Flying Burrito episode. Okay. I'll I, name it the Flying Burrito. Tito Santana. Yes, Tito Santana. 
which you had that going on at the same time as Glow, if I'm not mistaken. Right there. It's like a sideways stunner almost. No, no. For those of you wondering, that is a bounce off of the ropes and then a jumping forearm smash to the face. But I've also seen it where he was literally just, like, he was flying straight at somebody with his forearm out. It's a flying forearm, folks. Yeah. It is a flying forearm. Uh, we have updated that. Would yeah. you like to see the modern day version? I'm going to expose him to the AJ Styles. Oh, I'm not familiar with AJ Styles. Phenomenal forearm. Sean is much more versed in the wrestling vernacular as me. I have to say, on the rocks, the Duncan, uh, does it water down? The Duncan Taylor, it's it's pleasant. You know, when you reach that point in the night of drinking where you're like, I just want something that doesn't offend hurt. me. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't hurt me. Yeah. It's just nice. Don't make me work for this. I want to get buzzed. You want to taste? No. Okay. So, AJ Styles, phenomenal forearm. I hate that video effect. Oh, that silver for the eyes. So he jumps off the uh, ropes and then affects the forearm in the face. I missed I've it. Started... I, I actually missed it. Oh, there. Oh. You, you won't miss it. Okay, so really the difference is That's off the, off the is. from a height as opposed to off the ropes. Yes. It's not a jumping, but it's a super jump. Does he have a clever name for it? Phenomenal forearm. As opposed to the people's elbow. Right, but it's right here. So when he hits you, it's like the corner of the fucking elbow. It right. sucks. It it sucks. Oh, I'm sure. That actually like, looked, that actually yeah, looked like really Joe. connected and that guy has some really hit the mat. Uh John Cena. Yeah. A lot of those it's it. just it's just right in the corner of the elbow and it, oh Shinsuke Nakamura. They work together in uh Ring of Honor or New Japan or something like right. that. So yeah, it's a lot like the flying burrito only Super high and then beats the shit out of him, flipped him inside out. That's Chad Gable. Like I gotta say, the acting is amazing. <laughs> no, dude, the a lot of these are full contact. I'm I'm aware. I'm being that. that. <laughs> I'm aware. For the record, on this podcast, for you, dear listeners, wrestling is a real sport with real athletes that work twice as hard as many popular athletes making way more money. I get it. But you have to admit, there's occasionally a little selling going on on those hits. Yeah, uh, you know, Josh, we're going to watch a less than a minute video tonight. This is something I'm springing on you called It's a Strong Style Life. Fuck. And that will be about strong style wrestling. That is not a topic we have covered, but it is one of my favorite wrestling styles is strong style. All right. I tell you so, what. Good luck, my friend. But it it nice. it is full contact. It All is right. no, there's no pulling of anything. Every hit is every hit you take, Fuck. and every face you, you make. Oh, listen here, you little shit. All right, are you are you ready for a question, sir? Oh Christ! We have a question from Ted. Ted Theodore. I don't, I'm guessing. Ted asks, "What's an unwritten rule that every musician should know?" And I'd like to answer this first. There's many. There are many mus unwritten rules a musician should know. Number one is tune up before you play. There's nothing worse, especially if you're in a band with the person, than having them be out of tune and not realizing it until like halfway through the first stanza. Tuners are not that expensive. Tuning forks are not that expensive. There's ways. Get in tune, dude. Or do that. What do you got? Bring your own <laughs> shit. And Fair offer enough. to offer to help move things. Offer to yes. offer to be flexible. Offer to say, all right, well, uh, what can I do to make this work better? Common right. courtesy. That I feel that's gone now. I feel like we've we've abdicated away from it. Abdicated. Singers. Your job. Not even just singers. No, 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 no. Not enough people give the bass player enough appreciation. He's got a lot of shit he's got to move. He's got that big ass fucking case. However, that um, fucker weighs a ton, especially yes. if it's like a giant ATA flight case. I've had to lift Rob's Yuck. bass stack 
above my chest onto a stage because the stage didn't have a ramp or something, the stairs? There's nothing better than having to climb onto a stage to play. <laughs> but, oh God, that's what you want to feel emasculated. <laughs> I gotta climb a four foot wall and I'm five foot nine. In a fuck yourself. This is a, like, this was fuck a, you. This was a Vegas casino venue, by the way. I'm not but, surprised. But, but the singers. I know the Vegas singers get a lot of stick about oh, how do you just unload your, your microphone? You don't help. At least me, you know for a fact. I know, like I, without the band, I'm just a guy up there singing. I help. I help load in wherever possible. I also, Every, everyone's a part of the band. Yes. Look, I will also, if you, as, okay. Everyone who's going to chime in and hear this yes. will start to understand. I speak from a gear perspective. Mm -hmm. If you tell me, hey man, I got like a 62 twin reverb in there. Original everything. Okay, man. I got it. I know it's going to weigh 80 pounds. I know I'm going to carry it in by itself. With kick gloves. Just no, just to my body. I will open every door with a free hand because I will counterbalance with my bottom hand. Like it's it's there's a thought process to everything. I feel some people shit the bed when it comes to improvising. And you know what? What do you mean improvising? Like, like making life happen on the fly. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Making yeah, executive improvising. decisions. Improvising. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, executive decisions. Sorry. because We we're call that improvising. So I'm thinking improvising like the music. That's what I'm saying. Okay. We're talking about improvising with life. But if you're not good at it, you need some more routine than the rest of us do. And we don't mind you needing the routine, but if your routine is stay the fuck home and stay out of public spaces, stay the fuck home and stay out of public spaces. Right. I'm tired of the sympathizing and the empathizing. Like, no, you just, you're not willing to be a member of society anymore. You're trying to counteract all of the progress we're trying to make. You're, you're actively spreading the disease. And I will quote this because Oh, no. Oh, yes. I am taking a diatribe. I know. I'm warning you now. Remember I did this. I did this. I did this the last Remember episode. Remember what the question's about, though. It's no. It's an unwritten rule that every musician should know. So bring it, home slice. Bring your shit. Bring your music. Bring your equipment. Bring everything you ever want to play with. Bring all of it. Yeah. When you think, oh, I'm not going to need that for this gig, bring it. For the love of Pete. Hey man, I like to kind of do background vocals sometimes. I'm, oh, I'm gonna be that guy. I'm gonna do it. Go oh, for it. fuck it. Oh, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna lean harder into the bad advice category. <laughs> hey, if you like to take a. Oh fuck! This is gonna hurt. If you want to. Oh shit! If you want to take a PA speaker. Oh no. And hook up. A uh, vocal modulator pedal to oh, it. Oh, why would you? And hit and wear a headset microphone. Oh God! And <laughs> all at the same time. Oh, fuck. go for it. But bring your own shit. Why would you? Why would you stop? <laughs> because who's gonna stop you? <laughs> Nobody. If you brought your own shit, because, because to quote Adam Sandler in The Wedding Singer, because I have the microphone and I can <laughs> say, say anything, anything I want. <laughs> <laughs> you bring it all, man. You bring yeah. it all. You fucking bring it all. Just, just do it. Yeah, you bring extra strings. Just do it. I mean, look, I, I've got two. I've got two acoustic guitars. I want to refix. Yep. I want them. I want them tuned in different tunings. I want the strings to be different. Mm -hmm. Bring a backup power strip. I've played a gig where the bring power a backup strip. generator. I played a gig where the like, I'll strip, just yeah check this where I'll the power right strip, into that though the yeah. power strip failed and blew out the power to where we were plugged in so I had to that's why I'm like bring an extra generator yeah well, yeah. well I don't know about that much but yeah no, no bring, but bring an extra generator bring a second if solar powered find a solar hell. anything night. anything night, man. anything solar powered please start investing in oh, solar geez. powered. Mm. Oh, it's too many people okay. still rely on fossil fuels. I got another unwritten rule that every musician should know. Don't 
talk during someone else's set unless you're vocalizing approval of what they're doing. There are enough people Ooh. in the audience. Okay. Yeah. How many times have you tried to record? All right. Hold on. That that takes me to an but interesting how many, place. How many times like have this. you ever said like, "Hey man, can you record our set?" Or, or you know, we we you have like a video camera or just a, a microphone set up there with like tape around it so people can't bump into it. <coughs> and then you got people standing there talking about, "Oh yeah, well, blah 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 at the office and blah blah blah." Just totally oblivious to the fact you're trying to create content. You're trying to get your best sound out there at a show with an audience. If if if, in, if you know recording is going on, shut the fuck up unless you're vocalizing approval or clapping. Look, here's my big move because I have more. Go on. I, I was in a Mike Johnston video. That he recorded in Nashville, and really? I wound up on the video part of it because I wore the little purple thing and the black vest, and I showed up because when I showed up, mm -hmm. I wanted to learn something. Okay. And I did. Okay. About drumming. I wanted mm -hmm. to learn something. Okay. And I learned something. About what did you learn? Thank you. There's huh. a different question. You don't get to presume it was about drumming. I know, I was stabbed. Now I'm gonna die. Yeah, what did you learn? <laughs> 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 oh, you love to see it, folks. You love to see it. Except it's audio podcast. Oh, you love to hear it. Oh, right. no, you hate to hear it because it's a lot of clapping. Ah, right. oh, shit. One more. Do you have one more unwritten rule? Just. Oh, here's the thought. Stick to your goddamn set time. Don't go over. There's other bands waiting for you to get on stage. Nope, nope. The, oh, come on. To, tie, been, to, tie you... this, to tie this back into my anxiety about going over time. Yeah. Plan your set around knowing how much time it's going to take you to break down. Okay, yes, know, true. Know, know the load in and the load out of the venue. Hey, mm -hmm. venues. Hey, venues. Oh, oh, can we do a whole fucking... Can... Yeah. That can... was it. That was it. That right was down. the thing. That was the thing earlier I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, he's all yes. excited now. He's all excited. Yes. There's venues, nothing worse than a venue that doesn't communicate venue owners. what they expect from people. Venues and veteran owners. Just I wanna I wanna do like a whole Dear Abby column around venues and venue owners. Okay. Hey, why can't I keep anybody in my bar? Okay. <laughs> what do you thought? <laughs> what are you selling when your bands are playing? Oh, we're doing two dollar tequila shots and this and this. Like yeah. who the fuck people want to drink man, when they listen to live music. Look, you're you're orchestrating an event around live music. It's going to be a lot of singer songwriters. A lot of them are going to have material. You give them seven minutes each. Seven minutes. Where are you? Going? Look, let me finish. Okay. You give them seven minutes each. They get to choose in that seven minute bar how much time they take up. Not everybody is going to take up seven minutes. Not everybody's. Uh, uh, self composure is up to handle self. That is like true. Seven there, are, minutes there are songwriters out there that only do one song. And they're like, right. I'm only and comfortable like, I'm doing one done. song. Yeah, like I, I will need a minute and ten seconds. Me, you gotta fucking kick me off stage. <laughs> See? Huh? Like a great idea, right? Yeah, man. Here's the thing, though. I'm giving this to people on the internet for free. Son of a bitch! I honestly thought that was a phone going off with a notification or something. This Sorry, one's, this the, one's the, bad. the refrigerator. <laughs> there are somewhere listening. I'm hoping listening to this. There's like an appliance repair person or something that's just cringing when you do that. Going, oh god, just call for help, guys. Got, you know what? If you if you have any of that, please um, comment. Please, household. I will love appliance. I I want to learn. No. No, 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 and no, he, he's, no, He still has no. 19 days Stop of it. this. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it.
Okay. No. <laughs> oh god, I wish this was a video no. podcast sometimes. <laughs> he has 19 more days of this shit. Okay. Uh, new question. How about that? Should we move on? Or you were you done? Anyway, what I was going to say was to venues and venue owners. Um, don't underappreciate your talent. Or guess what? They'll fucking leave you. Yeah. They we, will. We've already talked ad nauseum about venues, the, the, the different types of venues out there. You gotta stop punching it with your hand. You're a drummer. It's fine. It's fine, man. Stop breaking your tools, jackass. It's fine. All right. It's not nearly as bad as this well, one. We've but talked this one has nice points. This one is rounded. Yeah. The yeah. rounded is the bad part. That hand's soft and supple. Like <laughs> yeah, the that's, a, that's the side that got broken. So That's the part that got hit with the uh, concrete. Oh, jeez, dude. Yeah. Who's hitting you with... Oh, never mind. So, no, I hit But we've talked to Nazim about venues and venue owners that are like, you know, either not caring about the music or they care about the music, but they don't know how to actually make money at their venues, so the music eventually leaves that video or that venue. Venue. Yes. But hey, new question. Pearl asks... I have someone in my life that's crazy about me, wants to marry me, etc. How can I get over being scared to commit? How? Uh, and they actually asked me personally because I've been married for 18 years and been together with her for over 20 years. Um, how did we do it, or you know, how how have we made the marriage work? And the joke answer, of course, is whiskey. But that's not the real answer. The real answer is you find someone who likes you, who likes being around you once they get to know the real you. Because after, you know, the first six months you're dating someone, that's not the real you. You're trying to impress them. You're trying to, you know, get them to trust you enough to, you know, be with you. But after six months, you start farting in the same room with them. <laughs> you start... You know, uh, saying hey, things like, so uh, what kind of fantasies do you have? And all those weird things that can open up weird doors. But to answer your question, Pearl, coming from someone who's happily married, and we also have someone here who is embarking on a new relationship after one ended, I feel like we're going to get the bookends of the, 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 the spectrum here. What do you think? Well, you know, I think I'm moving into a new situation. And I think I'm moving into a new healthy situation. Um, Knowing what I know, I agree. And I fully support you. Pearl, I, I've never had an inkling to be married. And I've never wanted to be married. It was never a goal of mine, never an aspiration. Because it just didn't hit me in the right chakra, if you will. It didn't shock me <laughs> wow. in the right way. Wow. But if there's a hesitation around somebody being adamant towards you and you have a reservation, maybe talk to a professional, maybe start to figure out what is the real perception that you have of yourself and is it acutely measured is it measured by someone who's in, who's a bystander i i agree like why are you are you scared because of you've been burned in the past or hurt in the past or are you scared because of some unknown uneasiness about this particular person. But given the, the, the spirit that it was asked, I feel like she's trying to unpack why the heck can't I commit in general, not this particular person. And again, I, I, we're just I, two guys. <laughs> we're just two guys in different relationship statuses, but you know, we're certainly not like professionals at this. So this is just our two cents. There's a there's a fundamental difference, I think, between men and women. And I will show that fundamental difference to you mm. right now. It is on this calendar. 
Oh no, a calendar. With pictures of a baby. A wee baby. So the question was about... Uh, the question was, I have someone in my life that's crazy about me, wants to marry me, etc. How can I get over being scared to commit? And how do you, how, is, how have you made your marriage, my marriage, last as long as it has? And the answer for me is, we just figured out, here's what, here, here's what I'm willing to do. Like, here's my assigned roles in the, in the relationship. And here's yours. And how do you feel about this? Great. Like, we, we figured out early on how we felt about things that we felt were important in keeping a, a relationship. Okay. Oh, go ahead. And my thing is, I <laughs> knew going into it, while everything didn't line up, we had common things we wanted to explore. Sure. It just, it took us half a dozen years <laughs> to now, you're, this, figure, figure out that we wanted to yeah. explore them together and with each other. Yeah, without going into too much detail, a, he, a, this there's is a lapse. Yeah. This is someone you've known in the past yes. that you've reconnected with. And so there well, is that bit of... Not not even somebody I lost a connection with to reconnect with in the first place. Well, just, just being like, hey, I'm single and you're single. Let's try this again kind of thing. No, there was never that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So I I met her at a wedding. Interesting. Were, were you flying solo that day? I was. Were you part of the wedding party? No. No, the wedding, the, the ceremony we went to was kind of a celebration of post sense. Hmm. So a reception. Kind of. Uh, reception would imply more than just uh, common law going down to the courthouse, getting your documents signed. Kind of oh, thing. gotcha. Yeah. So this so, is a beginning <clears throat> thing. Come like, hang out. Like, look, man, at the whole thing, some dude grabbed all the extra meat off the charcuterie plate. <laughs> look. And then threw it on a paper plate and then microwaved it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and to, <laughs> to cook it all. Uh, and it wasn't me. You and it wasn't. It wasn't me. It fucking wasn't. It wasn't. I, <laughs> I got her in the shower. <laughs> no, it wasn't me. But I, I'll fucking pull that shaggy card anytime. Ooh. Okay, Ashton Kutcher. But yeah, that was. It was. Uh, it was. It was. Di- mm. Go on. Different. Yeah. But the same amount of disappointing that I always knew. This is not me, her, or, or this is the wedding, you said, the, uh, uh, getting together, whatever thing. Like, when you met her. No, when I met her, mm-hmm. she was telling her joke. To you or to a group that you you would just happen to be on the, the satellite? To, no, 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 oh, oh, oh. See, you're gonna hear this one. She was like, "I want to see your podcast." I was like, "No, this is not, you're not gonna see it. You're gonna you can, you can listen to any you're, anyone you're but this episode." <laughs> oh fuck. Okay. Oh so, come on, son. Step a little closer to the mic. I'm trying to. I met mine dancing in a bar. I mean, I got no high ground here. You met her telling a joke at a wedding. No, she was telling a joke. Okay. And she was telling yeah, right. she right. was telling she was telling a good joke. A good joke, not like mine. <laughs> she was telling a good joke and I remember that because I tried to interject and I tried to deflate how good her joke was. Why would you do that? Because I was an asshole. <laughs> because I was Dude, a, you're a, a dick. A, yep. Yep, because I was a fucking asshole. Like, mm-hmm. I, I know why I did it. It just, it's coming to terms with some things. It's acknowledging that you made mistakes in the past. Look at you now. Hey, look at us now. Look at me now. Nobody's listening to me anymore because I've been canceled the same time. Anywho. But what I was saying was, mm-hmm. this is age to look like an 18 year. Fuck you. No, we're not going back to the whiskey. We're talking about. Damn it. We're talking about. I thought I could. I thought I could transition out here's, of it. Here's the. Somebody's deal, not letting me jump Pearl, out of it. Pearl wants to know 
<sighs> Why can't she commit? Somebody in her life is apparently wonderful and wants to marry her and blah, blah, blah. Bro, why why aren't you committing to enjoying the happiness yourself or allowing yourself to be in a place where you can enjoy the happiness? Well, here's the deal. Uh, obviously, Pearl, we don't know your, your past or even, you know, you asked me a question. I was just answering the question. Now, we need, to, now we need to I, edit out like six minutes. No, I'm thing. trying to answer as well. This is a dual podcast, may I remind you. I feel like I'm under-informed every time a question comes up. You can bring stuff to the podcast. I'm just saying. I uh, you fucking will apparently have to. Yeah. Uh, uh. Pro. None of us. None of us know what the hell we're getting into when we get into a search relationship or marriage or whatever. Until years down the line, you look back. It's all hindsight. All you can do is try to protect your heart the best you can. I personally had a list because when I met my wife, I had already been divorced once. And my parents had been divorced. And my siblings had mostly, all of them had been divorced. So I had a list of things that whoever I was going to marry this second and final time would have to kind of pass like a checklist. And she did, and then some. And we went through some stuff that you just can't prepare for. She had an infected gallbladder that made her have to go be away from me for months and be taken care of by her physical therapist mom. That just, you can't plan for that. But it, when she was gone, instead of saying, hey, she's gone, I can do whatever I want, I wrote a song about her. Actually, one of my favorite songs. And... That kind of, I started, I really looked at how I felt about her. It's like, you know, I think I'll be okay with this one. And I started going down my little checklist. But the thing is about love, in my experience, the best advice I ever got was love is not needing to be with someone. True love is wanting to be with someone but knowing that if they weren't around, you'd be okay, but you really prefer them being around. I know for a fact, if my wife and kid weren't around, I would survive. I'd be probably a lot sadder, but I would make it work because I'd want to be there for my kid. And it's obviously what my wife wanted. So that's all I can say about that. How about you? Great wrap up with the uh, the um, Spielberg. I, I, I had a feeling I know where you where you're going with this. That's all I got to say about that. Oh, Forrest Gump. There you go. Yeah, I thought about it. Yeah, and that. that's all I got to I say about that. Say about that. I'm gonna drink me about thirteen Dr. Peppers. Drink me about thirteen Dr. Peppers. <laughs> okay, so Pearl. I hope that helped a little. If, if you're having, the, honestly, it boils down to this. If you have to ask, the answer is probably no. <laughs> right? It, it, Pearl, I want you to appreciate the fact that you're going to be taking care of you. Yes. Every decision forward, you're going to be taking care of if this person in your life is pressuring you to make some sort of commitment or decision, you don't need them in your life. Oh, wow. Big time. Big yeah, time. I, know. I know that's a bit to cut out. Hey, Sean, you know what time it is? This boy, Sean. This boy, Sean. This boy, Sean. Make him sad. <laughs> 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 and there's your new intro. <laughs> No, it's oh, I tried it on the fly and it fucking worked. <laughs> it's time it's for it's it's time for weird time. news, which I normally do a little jingle. Weird news, but, weird news. But that's weird the weird news. news. That's the new weird news jingle. You're welcome, disappointed Sean. That's oh, you want to talk about disappointed? Motherfucker. What, Jim? What kind of new shit do you have for me this week? Picture this. 
Sicily, 1922. <laughs> I miss, I miss Estelle Getty. Oh, she's still, she's still alive, right? It has to be still we alive. Did, we've done this episode. Yes, yeah, sure. right. We've done so, this episode like six times. <laughs> Police get called because a woman, a wife, put icy hot on her husband's penis. Jesus, fuck! You know what the you know what you know what it says after that? Divorce pending. <laughs> no shit. Oh, if you've ever had icy hot or any Ben Gay or anything like that, oh, it's oh. it's a cold burn. And hey, hey, uh, no, uh, no, fuck all. No. Hey guys, 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 guys. You ever eaten anything with jalapeno or habanero? And then you go to the bathroom. Yeah. And you touch yourself you without realizing. You get, you get to shake shit off. And, yep. And then you go, ah! Oh, hot yeah. ones. Hot ones. Hot ones is a big one. Don't touch your eyes. Don't touch your junk. <laughs> Watch your eyes. Yep. Be careful around the eyes. Oh, God. Um. So, yeah. Uh. I mean, it's better than, I guess, Lorena Bobbitt. Oh. What was the question? Uh, there was no question. This is weird news. Oh. It was just she she put icy hot on his junk, man. I so I think I'd call the cops too, mostly to say I'm about to commit murder. <laughs> call the cops. <laughs> the cops are called. It doesn't say whether she did it like in his sleep. Look, you're okay. <clears throat> okay. So what I assume, what I assume. We're getting close to April 1st, my friends. Oh, God. We are getting dangerously close. The time by, my, by my guesstimation mm -hmm. of the date of release, we're getting pretty close to April 1st. And you know what? Some things shouldn't be joked about. No. I don't think we take that seriously enough. Some things don't just... There's no humor threshold. You don't get to get a fucking gimme on these. Pranks should not equal pain. No. 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 Sometimes they just hurt. But I, what 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 got me about it was that the police the police blotter little article about it, the last two words were divorce pending, <laughs> like no shit. Um, hey, speaking of uh, fucked up, oh shit, they're getting louder now. All right, so anyway, we're getting into the ASMR stuff before they come. <laughs> before they, before louder. they come to collect us, um, picture this: Sicily, Sicily 1922. 1922. You're on a bender. You're you're just drunk. You're blottoed, right? Yeah. Oh, hey. easy for me to imagine. Oh, really? Imagine this. You're Chinese. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. And, and for some reason, you confuse <laughs> a curveball immediately. You confuse a shipping container with your hotel room. Yeah, you're that drunk. And you almost, you're, you find out like an hour before it gets shipped to L.A. Fortunately, he had his cell phone on him. Right? <laughs> imagine that. You're just like, huh, 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 oh crap, uh, my room is moving. <laughs> I feel like this was a BoJack Horseman episode. <laughs> or an NCIS episode. But, or, uh, yeah, well, no, NCIS was like they're just contained on the, the, the dock and they're all cooking to death because it's so hot. Hey. So hot. So hot. But hey, way. you know, it wouldn't be an episode without Chris Walken. Hey, just walking in here on set. And just trying to say, I see it. I see it. But Duncan Taylor, it's not not a bad expression. It's not Twelve year, yeah. Twelve year. Let me let me dive into it a little bit. Let me. Do, let me. This episode brought to you by Duncan Taylor whiskey. It's not bad. Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh wow! Wow! Look at that. You got hints of hints of blackberry and apricot. Wow! It's insane. Oh look, it's molding into blackberry, into into figments of your imagination. Oh, fuck. Oh yeah, <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. A dad joke with Chris Walken impressions. Come on, who are you gonna come to with the greatest content? It's gonna be us. Always us. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, I'm gonna say thank you for listening to Two Brains One Bottle, the podcast for more, Patreon. Do you have any more to do? No, fortunately, we're we done. Anymore. No, no. Um, we're Jesus going. Jesus Christ, listen to those sirens. With the sirens playing <laughs> us out. <laughs> Play us out, Johnny! We're going to go ahead and say goodbye and say thank you for listening. Please call. <laughs>
Tell your friends. It's so loud. Tell your friends. So tell loud. your enemies. Oh. And um, remember, be amazing. Everything is going to be okay. Just take it one day at a time. And and we're all going to die. The never-ending abyss is always encroaching. Uh, Sean, anything else for the, the lovely listeners? Yes. The only way we accomplish everything we ever want to get done is by one step at a time. So when a meal seems too impossible, when you have to eat the elephant, how do you eat the elephant one bite at a time? Good night. I hope that uh, you all find yourselves in better spirits. Ha ha ha. I hope you all find yourselves. Better, better moods. And a better position in life. Yep. At the end of the day, it is all what we try to make it. So I hope it takes less effort for you. Here, here. We want to thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you so much. And also, if you want to support the channel even more, feel free to join. Uh, visit room6.shop. Got all sorts of merch there. Remember to be amazing. We'll see you next time on Room 6 and on Two Brains, One Bottle. Uh, ba-da-ba? Ba-da-ba. -ba.